morning. Welcome to the church in the gardens. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. My name is Ira Absell, and I will be your liturgist and song leader today. If this is your first time here, we invite you to place your name and contact information on a visitor's card in the pew rack. Please place it in the offering plate or give it to one of our greeters. If this is your first time here and you drove here and you don't have a parking pass on your dashboard, please immediately go see one of the greeters and get one so that you can avoid having unfashionable boots on your car. Please silence your cell phones. God bless you as together we experience God's life-giving word. We have a few announcements. The Bible study series, what the Bible does and doesn't say about open and affirming, which was facilitated by Reverend Fred, has finished. Recordings of the three sessions are available. Please contact Reverend Fred or the church office for links to the recordings. Gifts of food are urgently needed for Monkworks, our Ridgewood neighbor. Families are hungry and the food stamps program now called SNAP has been cut. Bring canned goods and non-perishable donations every Sunday to the basket in the sanctuary entry. And thank you very much. A Couple of things for the calendar. On Saturday, September 9th, there will be a food drive. The details are still being worked out. It will be here in the neighborhood. I'm going to skip the next one and say on Sunday, September 24th, following worship, we will have a discussion and summary of what the Bible does and doesn't say about open and affirming and discuss the next steps in the process of our church becoming open and affirming. I wanted to do a brief reminder of the event that World Service has planned for September 17th uh, in the community house. It's a, uh, the information in the weekly word, we had a couple announcements, we had an announcement this last week in the weekly word giving you an idea of where we are in the process and so forth, so I won't go into detail on that. I just wanted to remind you of the, of the event. And the concept is, is to put together an event that will help to further the fight against food insecurity, particularly in our, in our neighborhood. And the concept is to bring together people who have an interest and in, are working to solve that problem with people who are interested in trying to figure out how they can contribute to the problem, not contribute to the problem, uh, contribute to the uh, solution to the, to the problem. And so it's a process by which there'll be a learning process, there'll be a panel that will help people understand what the current condition of, of food insecurity is in, in our neighborhoods. There'll be an opportunity for people to engage engage with each other so that we can build some partnerships from people who can, I can do something, you can do for Ukraine, where we work with the people from the Kiyuka Cafe, who are from Ukrainian heritage, uh, who wanted to do a fundraiser for Ukraine. We didn't know where to do it, and we came along, we said we have a venue, we have a partnership, we partnered with another group that was able to distribute the money. And so three groups were able to put together an event that could not have been put together had we been iso in isolation and done it individually. That's the kind of thing we want to try to come out of this event, is people being able to put together fundraisers, food, food drives, uh, <coughs> advocation uh, campaigns, and so forth, to help people fight the problem of food insecurity. So if you know people who are concerned about food insecurity, I hope you don't know too many people who aren't concerned <laughs> about food insecurity, um, and who would like to find ways and talk to others to help them figure out some ways to fight it, if you have people who uh, are already working on it or people who think they would like to get engaged in, uh, please let us know or please, on your own, invite them to come to the event on the, uh, on the 
certainly change it. It'll be from 1.30 to 3.30. There'll be more flyers and other things coming out in the next uh, week or so. We still have a few weeks left, uh, obviously, but uh, hope that you will be able to uh, help us put this together and hope that many of you will show up and perhaps uh, help us uh, put the whole thing together. But if you know anybody who might be interested, please reach out to them. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Hal. Please pray for those who need healing, for all who are grieving or suffering loss of any kind. Please pray for those who are in residential care. Let me just underline good morning and uh, welcome to all who are worshiping with us here in person and online, a special welcome to those who are worshiping with us for the first time. And I do want to underline something that Ira has already said. At this church, when we say all are welcome, we mean all are welcome. And it is wonderful to have you with us. Uh, this is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, the season in which we celebrate God's Holy Spirit among us, present in the world. We have two Bible lessons today, which are all about God with us, God among us, God for us, God inside, God outside. The Holy Spirit is indeed in the house, as are you, as is Randall Keith Horton, our guest accompanist. Thank you, sir. It is wonderful to have you with us, as always. Um, Ira's introduced himself, thanks to you, and thanks to Dan Olson and Betty Chen, who are up on the soundboard and running Zoom. I want to make one more uh, announcement for kids and families. We are not having Sunday school today. Uh, the nursery room right at the base of the steps is open and available uh, for kids uh, with, with their parents or whoever else is with them if you all need a place to chill during this service. And coloring tabs and such are available in the back. Let us pray. O God of love, O God of grace, O God who is present, ever present for us. Be with us this morning as we gather to offer prayer and praise, to hear your word and meditate on your will for us and the world. Be on our musician, our liturgist, our Zoom and sound texts, on all of us gathered here and online, that we would know how near you are to fill us, to be with us, to make us strong, and let everybody say, Amen. 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 If you are able, please stand for the call to worship. God will speak peace to the people. When God's glory dwells in the land, Truth will spring up from the ground and justice will look down from the heavens. Praise the Lord. Our opening hymn is in the red or blue pilgrim hymnal you can find in the pews. It's number one. Our God, our help in ages past, verses one through four and verse six. Please join in singing.
join me in a prayer of confession, I will begin. For all the ways we have hurt ourselves, hurt others, and harmed the world, forgive us, O oh God, fill us with your grace. Bring calm to the storms that batter us and blow us off course. Help us through the clutter of daily existence. Make us whole. Be with us in this brief time of silent reflection. Siblings in Christ, our God, our help in ages past and present, now forgives us and calls us to and for life. Live in that freedom. Live in that peace. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace. As we prepare for our Bible lessons, may God bless the reading and the hearing and the understanding of these holy words. This morning's first lesson is from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 13a. For those who wish to follow along, the text can be found on page 326 in the Red Bible, and on page 404 in the Black Bible. The story we're about to hear is about the fact that the prophet Elijah has just arrived somewhat miraculously on Mount Horeb, also known as Mount Sinai. Here's what happened. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. 
And Elijah heard it. He wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the tent. God bless the hearing of our word. Our gospel lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33, page 15 in the Red Bible, and page 19 in the Black Bible. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had dismissed the crowd, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against him. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. These two Bible readings in their own way, and especially when taken together, take us deep into what faith and faith life are all about. Earlier this week when you and I met, Randall, I was saying that I was wrestling with which one of these to preach on. I want to let you know I've stopped wrestling. I'm going to preach on both. I want to start with this amazing story about Elijah's experience of hearing. Is that even the right word to use? Do you hear silence? of hearing or of feeling, of knowing God's presence, strength, grace, and fortitude in his, Elijah's own life, and in the world. I won't repeat the whole thing as we just heard Ira read it. Let's jump in right here. As we heard, God, or as it's put, the word of the Lord, said to Elijah, go out. Stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, that sound of sheer Silence. Thin, I think is the Hebrew word. Thin, quiet. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle. The, our stoles that, that priests and pastors wear are kind of an appropriation of the prophetic mantle. Elijah wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance to the cave. I want to ask you, about this story and how you react to it. But before I do, I want to set the scene just a little bit more. First, you could not be at a more holy place than where Elijah is. One way or the other and how is not clear to us, the readers, or to Elijah. Somehow, through running and hiding, 
and finding food in unexpected places from unexpected people, somehow Elijah ends up up on Mount Horeb, which we know better as Mount Sinai. Way out there, way up there in that holy place. It makes no sense. It's like if you're a jazz musician. Who's ever heard of a jazz musician? If you're a jazz musician and you got run out of, I don't know, some club up in Harlem because whatever you played was so out of line with what the promoters wanted and expected that they ran you out of there. And then you're just kind of wandering aimlessly. And you just kind of miraculously end up on the stage at Carnegie Hall. Something like that. What to compare Mount Sinai to? Forget Sinatra, forget Ellington, forget Ella. This is Moses we're talking about. This is where Moses stood. This is where God appeared. God appears to nobody. This is where God appeared to Moses, where Moses stood. You can't name a more holy place. And somehow, Elijah got there. Presumably with God's help. But God's not saying, and Elijah isn't asking. Elijah had just come within inches of his life. He was up in one of the big cities up north along the coast. Let's call it Boston. And right there in Boston Garden, he had a showdown with Larry Bird. I mean, <laughs> with, with King Ahab. And in fact, that is exactly the king's name. New Bedford, Massachusetts, notwithstanding, and the Great White Whale, notwithstanding. Ahab is, in fact, the king's name. And Ahab and Ahab's self-appointed prophet, they didn't like what Elijah was up to. Elijah, the prophet, wasn't going along with Ahab's propaganda. Elijah, the prophet, did what prophets and religious leaders are supposed to do and call people on their stuff. And Elijah said, and not just people, but especially, you know, the kind of people I'm talking about, kings and wannabe kings. And Elijah said to Ahab and to Ahab's self-appointed flunkies, I was going to say, prophets, the Bible nicely calls them, false prophets, Elijah says, no, God doesn't go for this sort of corruption. And God doesn't go for you, Ahab and Ahab's prophets, telling the people what God thinks. Elijah said, and he keeps talking for all to hear in Boston Garden, isn't it rich, O king? that what you say God wants makes you rich and takes all of God's resources away from the people who need them. I'll give you one guess how the king and the prophets reacted to that. And so here we are. Elijah somehow gets away unharmed and somehow gets to Mount Sinai. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces. But God wasn't in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. God wasn't in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. God wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer, thin silence. When Elijah heard that, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out. What do you make of this story? What, what jumps out for you and what's going on? Anybody want to start us off? What about that? Go ahead.
was he speaking truth to power and then felt aware that he wanted to remove himself? Yeah, or just saw the, the threat and, and got out of there. It's wonderful what you raise. I mean, it's, a, it's a, a whole thing in the Bible about how prophets handle themselves. Jesus refers to this whole tradition. You know, they kill the prophets. You get in trouble saying this stuff. And then it's, it's a whole movement within early Christian martyrdom when the government is coming after the Christians. What do you do as a pastor, as a bishop? Do you stay like, like Elijah did and stand up? Or when is it right to get out of town like Elijah also did? And this gets debated. So yeah, I think that would be the way we would put it, speaking truth to power. And then what comes next? Demonstration of real power. That's a lot of fun. This is a wonderful example of words and how we use them. The word, the word for power that's used, I think I'm right every time, but at least almost every time you read the word power in the Gospels, it's the word dynamis, the word for dynamite. Power. <laughs> you know? And power to do really harmful things and power to do really good things. Someone over here saw the Oppenheimer movie. I mean, you know, how about that? Power, power, what do you do with it? How do you do with it? How do you use it? Go ahead. Wind, earthquake, and fire, besides being a really good pop band, or do I have that a little wrong? They, they're, they're, all, they're all external. I, I want to get what, what you said, Richard, just right. Are all outside or external. And how did you put it? The quiet God is within us. Yeah. Others. Covering one's face in, in his mantle, wrapping himself up in his mantle, a sign of, I don't want to put words in your mouth, humility, humility and contemplation. Humility and contemplation. God doesn't show up in these events. And did you even say things that you associate with God? Did you say that? Like acts of God. That's what we call them. That's what insurance people call them. Acts of God. Yeah. Let's make sure we never hire Denise to do our publicity or marketing around here. I mean, if I want to be a good religious leader, my God, look at what God just caused. And that's because God's against someone who sure as heck doesn't look like me or believes like me. It's against them. And that's why God did that. How many millions of dollars sick have been raised on TV by that? And I don't like to speak ill of the dead, and I won't, but boy, do I want to come up with a name of someone who made a career out of this and besmirched everything about God and the Bible by doing it and throwing out his stupid judgments on other people and saying that God caused 9-11. God caused an earthquake. God caused a tsunami because of that person who doesn't agree with me and God's against them and not me. What does Elijah say? What does Elijah say to that kind of nonsense? God is in the sheer silence, the still small voice. That's what Elijah heard. It's brilliant. Heard the silence. And it's not only in this story. Right smack dab in the middle of most, most Bibles, I mean, you know, it varies. 
But if you just open a Bible in the middle, you're going to come to Psalm 46 or somewhere around it. You can flip, quickly flip to Psalm 46. God says, be still and know that I am God. Stop with the noise. Stop with the huge and big and crazy that you people in the USA just seem to love and the concocted lies. Stop with the monkey brain. Stop with it all. Be still and know that I am God. Get yourself centered, says God. Know that I am with you here and now, says God. Clear your head. Open your heart. Know, feel, and experience me. Even when things are tough, especially when things are tough, be still and know that I am God. That's sermon number one. That's Bible lesson number one today. And we're going to go to the gospel story now and see how profoundly related these stories are to each other and to us and to our lives. And it starts, our gospel lesson does, Jesus sends them away, sends the disciples away because, why? Does anybody remember? Why does he send them away? What's that? That's no fair. You read it. <laughs> Go ahead. Come on. Jesus, well, good for you. Jesus, uh, Jesus wanted to be the one to dismiss the crowd. He wants to get that right. And then he goes to a quiet place. Fascinating, based on what we just read. Sends them away, dismisses the crowd, goes to a quiet place to reconnect with God. That's Jesus. Jesus knows he needs to reconnect with God. Then, after he's reconnected with God, And I guess just because he's Jesus and he can, or maybe he's got to get to them fast for some reason. I don't know. He doesn't wait around for the next boat. So he just goes walking out there on the water. They see it and they're afraid. And he says, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Except there's only one problem with all of our English translations. Jesus doesn't say, take heart. There's no word for heart in here. There's no word for take in here, for that matter. Jesus uses one word, and it means be bold, be confident. In our language, we might even say, be you. Know what you're doing why you're doing it, and do it. Fascinating one-word delivery that Jesus gives us. Be bold. It's me. Don't be afraid. It's what Jesus says. And so how does Peter, the disciple, Respond. He says, call me, Lord, to come out there too. That sounds bold. Confident. Good for Peter. And God bless him. He does venture out there. For just a bit. But then. But then. We're told. He notices the strong wind. And my guess is if it hadn't have been strong wind, it would have been rough waves or a thunderclap or another boat coming toward them 
or some rocks up ahead or whatever. It's always something in life. It's always something. Whatever happens out there, this goes back to what Richard was saying, whatever happens out there, Peter forgets about what's happening in here. He forgets what Elijah learned so well after speaking truth to power. And he forgets what Psalm 46 teaches. He forgets to stay centered, to be still inside, to know that God is God. Peter loses his boldness, his confidence. And it's really fascinating when you read the story, no pun intended, or maybe the pun is intended. This guy, Simon, Shimon, who Jesus nicknamed Peter the Rock, sinks like a rock. He forgets to be still. He forgets to be centered. He forgets to know who he is. He forgets be in touch with God and that God is God. Okay. No big deal. We all blow it sometimes. Forget who we are. Forget that God is with us. Thank God Jesus was there just like the living Christ is for us. Jesus holds out his hand, saves Peter, and we all Get a lesson. Be bold. Yes, be bold. Be confident. Do not be afraid. And while you're being bold, while you're being confident, in order to stay being bold, be still. Hold that centering, calm, stillness inside. Know it from the top of your head to your toes. Know it in your bones. Know that God is God, that you are you, and that together you make one powerful team. <laughs> Made even more powerful, and that's the underlying story in both of these narratives made even more powerful as Elijah, who needed to get centered and then get back to the people and to the nation which had lost its way where he was so needed. And for Peter, who needed to get centered before returning to the other disciples and to the work that they had ahead of them, you and God together, powerful, made even more powerful with the team of God's people all around you and what we all do together to live and to share the good news of God in the world. Know that God is God. Know that you are you. Know that with God and the people of God around you, God's got you covered, and you are part of something greater. The good news of God in your life and in the world. Sisters, brothers, siblings in Christ, ever and always keep that stillness inside. God is with you. You are God's child. Keep that stillness and that confidence, and be ever bold in living out God's news in your own life and in the world. Let all of God's good news children say together, Amen. Amen. Our next hymn can be found in the Green Sing hymnal. You can find them at the end of the pews. It's number 267, Will You Come and Follow Me? We'll sing verses 1, 4, and 5. Please join in singing and stand if you are able.
pray. O God of stillness and quiet, quiet confidence and bold action in our lives and in the world, we thank you that you call us, call us to be yours and call us to be fully ourselves. We thank you that you call us together, your children together, to live out your will for us and your world we thank you for our church, the church in the gardens, and for every way that we together embody and live out and share your good news. Continue to bless and to grow what we do and bless all of our partners in ministry here and around our borough, city, nation, and world as together we live out your will for us and the world. We pray for our nation and the world, O oh God, in these times of war and division and climate change and quote-unquote natural or quote-unquote act of God disaster. Let us all reject hate-promoting activity. Let us all embrace the ways that make for life for all of our world's people and for our world, the planet itself. Let your love and care and life-giving and recreating spirit guide us, move us, and be our goal. We thank you and pray for all first responders, peace officers, healthcare and frontline workers, for all who work for peace and health and safety. We pray for all in harm's way due to war and other violence, due to wildfire and floods and other disasters, and due to poverty. We pray for all in need of food, housing, health care, and meaningful employment. We pray, O oh God, for all who are sick and recovering from illness and injury, including Philia, Christopher, Karen, Millicent, Noriko, Patrick, Jean, Connie, Anne, Suzanne, the sister of Ernie, and Dora. We pray for all who are grieving or suffering loss of any kind, and we pray for all in residential care, remembering especially our sister Millicent, as she has been recently relocated. And we pray for our sister Betty and her family as they deal with difficulties in their community. All other prayers, O oh God, we bring to you as we hold them in silence, 
for as we call them out aloud now. Hear all these prayers, O God, and hear us as we pray together just as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. ushers begin to move among us, I invite us with these words, God calls us to be still aware of our own selves and of the world around us. God calls us to be bold. God calls us and invites us to boldly be part of God's good news active in the world. Give to the work of this church, give to the work of God alive in the world. I would like to offer a word of thanks. This offertory will be a little longer than the other two weeks that I've had the honor to substitute for my dear friend Sonny but also to meet Pastor Fred in his office and at lunch. Pastor, you have ministered to me, and I thank you for that. You probably don't know how much you have, and that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. And when you gave us the admonition to be still, a song came to me. I'm going to sing just a bit of it and then sing the offertory song. We must wait.
in God's timing, God will tell what to do, where to go, and what to say. There is only one river that is deep within my soul. God put it there when he filled me with his Holy Spirit and made me whole. He has saved my soul, led me to that river. Jesus, my shall flow rivers of living water of a living water he said that up from my valley shall flow and 
Dearest Lord, we have given to respond to God's voice. We have given to remind ourselves how many gifts we have to offer. We have given to remember that we are part of something bigger than ourselves. We have given because we believe in music and sacred spaces. We have given with the faith that together we have we ask that these gifts be acceptable to Jesus, our Savior. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is back in the Pilgrim Hymnal, number 317, I Love to Tell the Story. Please join in singing and stand if you are able. the benediction I do have just a few things I want to say it's a little out of line of what I would normally do our friend Rob Mackay is presenting something wonderful on Tuesday night at the Queens Theater and I would just love for all of you who are interested in Ken to make that and you can give us a little more detail I hope about that Tuesday evening at the Queens Theater 8 o'clock quick 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 I love it. And then just uh, very quickly, uh, uh, those of you who know my office uh, know that one of my goals this summer was a very important goal, which was to get rid of all of these boxes of books that were 
sitting in my office and blocking people who were coming to meet with me and everything <laughs> like that. I'm very proud of myself and uh, that that has been accomplished and there are now six boxes of books at the base of the steps uh, <laughs> giveaway. <laughs> Please feel free to take uh, as many as you would like. Uh, coffee and fellowship is also at the base of the steps and now let us receive the blessing as God calls us out into joy and into storms and as we always remember to know and to be still and to center ourselves with God may God bless you and keep you May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you and the whole world peace. Amen. Sonny will be here next week.